I'm an elementary art teacher. I've been doing elementary art for 11 years, and I have pretty much been using Kahoot from the beginning for a variety of reasons. Obviously, we learn about like things like the elements and principles of art or art historical periods through our projects and being like really hands on. But there are times when we just need to review vocabulary and what those things really mean. Um, just taking like space as an example, as an element of art, there might be different things we focus on every year. Like one year might be positive and negative space, one year might be perspective, one year might be the three grounds of art, but we still want to go back and review all the things that we know about it because there's certain things I need to impart to these kiddos before they move on to like middle school and high school. So primarily I use Kahoot in the art room to practice like those kinds of things in a more fun way where it's not just me up there talking about them all the time. Plus it gives the kids an opportunity to actually like show what they know instead of just like talk about it in a more fun way. But we also use it for art historical periods. And another thing I absolutely love using Kahoot for is rules and procedures at the beginning of the year. I'm in a very unique position as an educator to have these kids for possibly six years. So my beginning of the school year, like first day of school might look a little bit different than the classroom teachers. They pretty much should know the rules from year to year. We have some new friends. So obviously we still talk about all those things in detail and what they need to know. But then for the most part of these kiddos, it's a lot of review. So I end up pulling out Kahoot at the beginning of the year. It's fun, it's exciting, it's engaging, and it's a way for them to practice all of our rules and procedures um, in a fun, interactive way that they can all get on board with. It kind of breaks the ice if they're like nervous to talk to each other or new friends at the beginning of the year. And it's also great to use like after breaks, like Thanksgiving break, fall break, winter break, you know, things like that is just a refresher of like when we come in here, what the expectations are. So I use it like very strategically to practice things that we need to know. And the kids are so engaged and they absolutely love it. Um, one of the first reasons I ever fell in love with Kahoot way back like a decade ago was just how customizable it can be. I could upload the exact pictures I wanted, the exact questions, and it was I could make it specific um, for my like content. Um, as much as I absolutely love art, sometimes there's not as many resources out there. We're getting better and better, especially ever since like COVID and virtual learning happened. But in the beginning, it was kind of hard to find some things that match my curriculum and exactly what I wanted to do or what I needed to teach. So I love the fact that I could come in and I could make these exactly what I want to, questions, pictures, everything. Um, another reason why I love it is that I, you know, over the years have figured out how to make it public, share with others. Um, I am lucky enough to be the district lead now for my elementary art teachers. So a lot of those teachers coming in um, that might not have these resources already created or know about them, I can share with my new hires or fresh out of college teachers. So they have something to hit the ground running with and start. They can always make a copy, edit to exactly what they want. Um, during COVID and virtual learning, I love the fact that I could assign them virtually and we could still really practice that knowledge that we would be talking about day to day in the classroom remotely. And it wasn't like, oh, we have to wait. And we could keep up with exactly what we needed to while we needed to do it, which was really awesome. And I love that part of it. And the kids had fun. It was a great thing to kind of break up their like virtual learning day. But really, I just love the fact that you can share things publicly and that like for all my new teachers too, if you wanna just be able to like Google and like go in different categories and see what's out there and that's already been created so you don't feel like you have to create everything from scratch, that's a wonderful feature that they have like all these different subjects and categories of things that other people have already created that you can take and run with too, which is really nice. Um, I also, like I just talked about, there's the whole database of things that are already created to um, edit for your own, which is amazing. But I specifically love <laughs> Kahoot in the art room too, just because of the data that it gives you. There's a lot of talk about data and like the core subjects, and it's really hard to get like the same type of data that like admin or your principals want when you're in a creative class. And so I have definitely used Kahoot for my goals and evidence more than once because at the end 
of every like quiz and game that you play. You have the option to run a report that puts everything in like a spreadsheet. It's great reflection just for you as a teacher in general. Um, even if I haven't used it as goals and evidence, I've always gone back to see, you know, what questions were they not getting? What questions seem kind of hard? Do I need to like reword it? What do I need to like go back and teach more? So they make it as easy as possible for you to get like real data that you can translate into goals and evidence. If that is a thing that your admin does, I love how it breaks it down and just does that for you. It's been super helpful in reflection of just seeing how students are grasping the content and being able to take that and use it for other things that I need professionally. Um, but really what changed the games and the culture and like everything in my room was these student led game modes. I loved the fact that they let you try so many of them for free. That's kind of how we got hooked in the first place. It's like, oh, what's this? This is something new. Um, but the kids are able to just be more independent and move through the questions and the content at their own pace. Maybe someone needs like a little more think time or other people move like through faster or they want to look for clues around the room if anything's like on the wall. So it's kind of cool that like they don't necessarily have the same question as the person sitting next to them in these game modes because a lot of times, you know, in classic game mode, they might talk to their friends about it, which is great. You know, we love collaboration and communication, but it's kind of fun that they have to do it a little more independently, but can still like talk to people. Um, the engagement though is what like blew my mind. It is very hard to hear a pin drop in an elementary art classroom. And there are some game modes they just get into like the chill art, which I'm already biased against because I love art. So I love the fact that they incorporate art history into like things like this as well but they are literally so chill in that game mode and they are just in, into it, they're quiet, they're trying to build that masterpiece. And then it's like fun for me to be able to talk about it in the end, like the artist, the time period. So we try to extend that knowledge a little bit, but when it comes to like color kingdoms or cosmic conquest or tallest tower, you will hear them like talking and collaborating across the room. They're really like trying to build like teams and communication and it gets like the quieter students talking, they get really into it. I mean, there is not a kid that is sitting there bored during these game modes. And that's what I absolutely love about it. They're into the content, they're getting something out of it, but it's in like such a fun way that they really love and get the most out of. So it's fun seeing them work together as a common goal and kind of come together, build their social skills, talk to one another, and have something that they're all working for at the same time. They absolutely love it. And like the proofs in the pudding, like I said, I you know just walk around and like take pictures and very active on social media for my classroom anyways. But like I said, they are all so focused and so into it. They want to know exactly where they are in the game mode and what levels are shout out strategies to help each other, help their teams across the room. It's been a really cool thing to see come to life in the art room. And like I said, practice things that we need to know in a really fun way and make sure we're hitting all the points of everything we need to know, even if we can't cover it all in one year. But like I said, I'm here 11 years later just because of the sheer ease of use, the competitive game modes and how they're staying up with the competition and things that have come out. The kids absolutely love it and Kahoot's always adapted to meet like my current needs and give pull out like tools and things that are always helpful for me. I know I 100% probably don't even know 100% of what all Kahoot can do, but it's fun growing as an educator, growing with Kahoot through all the changes and seeing what they like offer and what always is coming up next because it's always something great.